Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the board game Alder Quest. I'll be explaining how to play it with two players, but the game also comes with an option for solo or more than two people. If you're going to do it one against one, here's how it goes. You are going to keep playing until there are four tokens with a snowflake on them in these spaces on the board. And then the game is immediately over. Whoever has the most points is the winner. There is no bonus scoring at the end and all the points are written on these acorn tiles. If you're the red player then you have to get the blue acorns. If you're the blue player then you have to get the red ones. But again, you play until there are four snowflakes here, then it's over and if you have the most points, you are the winner. Before I start explaining how to play the game, I'll quickly tell you how you get these acorn tiles. You have to send out your minions to pick them up, these cards. Then you have to bring them to the tree, these four spaces under the canopy. Then the acorn tile goes over to this other board and you have to match them up with other acorns of the same color to finally have them in your possession. So pick them up, bring them to the tree and then candy crush them on this other board here. Alright, this is the matching board. Normally you have this the other way around against the board but just so that you can see this for the video, I have it like this. You play each round in two steps. First you deal with this matching board and after that you deal with this other one, the field board. So let's start over here. The player that has this token goes first and you also take your full turn. You don't go back and forth with the other player that person goes when you are fully finished. You begin by reaching into this black pouch to take out one token for each column that isn't completely full. You place each token from left to right. When you've done them, you slide them down each column as if they were dropping down. And after that, it's possible that this already creates a match, in which case you deal with it. That's how you start each turn. It's called dropping a new line. And then you can take three actions. I'll explain them in a moment, but they're all written on this middle space on the board here. Even on both sides, so both players can have a peek. And after each action, I flip over one of my long cards, the hero cards. When I flipped all three over, then it's the other player's turn to drop a line and take three actions. So, what do we do here? What's the point? On this matching board, you have to try to make a match. A match is when you've placed at least three tokens of the same color in a row. That can be either vertically or horizontally. Each player has two colors that you chose at the start of the game. I'm orange and yellow. The other player is green and white. Whenever I make a match with my own colors, I can take them. I'll need them to spend later. Whenever I make a match with the colors of the other player, you put the tokens in the discard pile and drop a new line. And of course, whenever you remove tokens, then the first thing that happens is that the other tokens come sliding down. Again, it's possible that this creates another match and you deal with that as well. If you make a match of three tokens, then you just take them. If you make a match with four tokens, then you can steal this first player token away from the other player. And if you make a match of five tokens, then you can also steal the first player token, but also take the top card from this little deck right on top of the tree. These are strong bonus cards. If you make a match with acorns of the same color, then you get to take those points and keep them. If you make a match with snowflakes, 
you place them on these spaces all the way at the bottom. That will bring you close to the end of the game, or end it in case you have four of them. So, you have three actions to do. What can you do? The action you can choose to do is drop a new line. Again, just take tokens from the bag, place them over the columns that aren't completely full yet, and drop them. The second action you can choose from is switch. You can take two tokens that are next to each other and just switch them around. You cannot do this diagonally. The third action you can choose from is slide. If there is a token that has an empty space right next to it, you can slide it over there. And the last action you can choose to do is the hero action. Each long hero card has a special power written on each side. You can use the special power that's written on the scroll during this part of the game. You can't use what's written on the other side right now. Each special power also shows how many of these rune tokens you have to pay to use them. Usually they're not free. Put your tokens in the discard pile and then you can do whatever it says on the card before flipping it over. It doesn't matter what the colors of the runes are, you can use any you like. I won't repeat any of that, it's written right here on the board in front of you. When the other player also has had a full turn, then we come to this board, the field. To make it easier to see, I'll remove the tree in a moment, but you can see that the tree has four sides sticking out. This is the canopy, and these four spaces under them are the canopy spaces. Keep that in mind. When I remove the tree, you can see the trunk on the board, uh, and still know that these four spaces are the special canopy spots. When you play this game, leave the tree on the board because it's also part of the game that you can't easily see what's going on on the other side, and it's up to you to keep an eye on that. Anyway, now we're in the second part of each round, the field phase where you can move minions and do actions. Again, the player with this initiative token goes first and takes a full turn before the other player gets to go. Remember that my colors are orange and yellow, so I control all the orange and yellow minions on the board, these square cards. And I'm the red player, so I'm trying to get those blue tiles on the board. So, let's go through this from the start. The first thing you both have to do is place new tiles. At the end of each round, you have to take one tile out of your own pouch. And you begin each field phase by placing all the tiles that you both have with you. Not the trap tokens that you keep on the side, only the tiles that you've pulled out of the bag. You have to place them on an empty space. In case no space is empty, just look in the rule book for what to do. Only the canopy spaces around the tree are forbidden. It's also possible that you have some of your minion cards on the board that are turned like this. Now is the time to turn them back to indicate they're ready to move again. When you've placed all your tiles, you can do your actions and move your minions. You've got three actions to spend again by flipping over these hero cards. And if you want to, and can, you may play as many of these quarrel cards from your hand as you like. It costs one rune token to play a card, and in this case it has to be a rune that is the same color as the one that's on the card that you want to play. I'll go into detail in a moment, but again, during your turn, you can move each minion, do three actions by flipping over these cards again, and do as many bonus actions as you like by playing these cards from your hand. And you can do all of this in any order you like. 
moving and doing actions, do it the way you want. First, I'll explain the main actions. They're written on the right of this matching board. Some of them also have a price, and that's written right by the action. The first action you can choose to do is upgrade. It's free, and all you do is flip over one of your own square minion cards. Now it has a special ability, and maybe a better way of moving around. The second action you can choose to do is draw a card from your own quarrel deck. If you want, you can even use it immediately. Pay the token it's asking for and do it. Then it goes on the discard pile. But taking a card is free. The third action you can choose to do is your own hero ability again. Now you can do what's written on this side of your hero cards. The price to do it is right there. You have to pay that many tokens in any color you like. And then just do what it says on the card. And the final action you can choose to do is place a minion on the board. That costs you one rune token. The minion decks are here. So you put them onto the board in the space right in front of it. You can only choose one minion, and you can only do that if there isn't another minion already there in that space. Also, as soon as you've placed it on the board, you have to turn it to indicate it isn't allowed to move this round. This is called Exhausted. And you can only place the minion that has the same color as the token that you just paid. And those were all the actions you can choose to do. After each action, flip over one of your hero cards, but you can still keep going if you want to maybe play some more cards from your hand, or if you still have some minions that you can move around on the board. Once you've really done everything you wanted to do, then you end your turn by taking one tile from your pouch. Make sure the other player doesn't see what it is, and keep the tile with you. It'll go on the board next round. The last thing to explain, moving. Each minion can move up to two spaces. You can't move diagonally. After you've moved, you turn the card to indicate it's exhausted. You can't move that one again this turn. If a minion is upgraded and it shows a little icon in the corner, that means you can choose to move it differently. In the rulebook it shows what each icon means and how you can move that icon. A minion. <laughs> if you step into the same space as another minion, you're both removed from the board. You have to place your minion on the bottom of the deck it came from. But if it happens to be upgraded, you can keep it this way. You don't have to flip it back over. If a minion steps into a space where there is a tile of another player, you must deal with it. You can either not look at it and tell the other player to put it back in the pouch, or you flip it over. If it's a snowflake, it goes in the discard pile. At some point the black pouch will be empty and everything from the discard pile goes into the bag. If you flip over a tile and it's an acorn with points on it, then you can keep it with you to bring it to the tree during your next turn. The only rule for that is that you have to step into a canopy space using a normal move. You can reach the tree by using you cannot reach the tree by using one of those special moves. Once you're there, you can drop it uh, in one of the columns on the other board. And the last thing a tile can be when you flip it over is a trap. The other player can choose what happens to you now. Either you have to remove the minion, place it on the bottom of the deck it came from. Or, the other player can choose a 
quarrel card that has a trap icon on it. Now is the time to use those. Then whatever is written on the card is what happens to you. Either way, once you've taken the damage, the owner of the trap takes the token back from the board. There are a few more things about moving. First, it's allowed to pass an acorn tile over to another minion if they're next to each other. Second, if you step into a canopy space to deliver an acorn tile, your minion is exhausted. Even if it was allowed to move one more step, and remember, when you've brought it to the tree, you can drop the acorn tile in one of the columns on the other board. This process is called a tribute. Third, when you begin your turn on one of these canopy spaces, and there is another minion of the other player right next to you, then you can go there to kick it off the board without you yourself also having to be removed. It's like you came falling from the tree for a surprise attack. And the last special thing you can do when you move is jump off the board where there is a hero of another player. In that case you have to take back your minion card and place it at the bottom, but the other player has to discard one quarrel card and draws two tiles from their pouch. Those will go on the board later. Uh, if the minion that attacked the hero has had some special power, that still counts. It's a lot of information, so feel free to look it up in the rulebook if you can't quite remember. The most important part is that you got a good sense of how to play this game. And we're there. This was my explanation for Alder Quest. Like I've said, you can play this solo or with more than two players. Just look it up to see how that goes. But of course, it'll be mostly the same. I hope you feel like you understand it a bit and that you'll enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment and see you for the next one.